In the presence of an acid or base catalyst, water adds to ketones and aldehydes to form compounds that are called hydrates. And you see a general example of a hydrate on the right-hand side of this slide. This is an addition reaction because the elements of, bit of water have been added to the ketone. In this case, we see OH added at the carbonyl carbon and a hydrogen added at the carbonyl oxygen. And these, in essence, came from water or the acidic or basic catalyst used. Mechanistically, an acidic or basic catalyst is required to facilitate nucleophilic addition. For example, in the presence of an acid catalyst, the first step is protonation of the carbonyl oxygen. This generates a protonated carbonyl intermediate, which is especially electrophilic at the carbonyl carbon. Consider the alternative resonance form with positive charge on the carbonyl carbon. Water adds to that carbon in a nucleophilic addition step, nucleophilic because water is donating a pair of electrons to the carbonyl carbon, and this leads to a protonated hydrate intermediate. To regenerate the catalyst, H3O+, and generate the neutral product, water, the conjugate base of the acid that was generated back in the first step, deprotonates the positively charged oxygen. This generates the product and restarts the cycle by regenerating another molecule of H3O+. Under base catalysis, the situation is a little bit simpler because if we imagine the base catalyst being hydroxide itself, the nucleophilic addition of hydroxide to the carbonyl carbon generates an anionic hydrate, the conjugate base of a hydrate, directly. After nucleophilic addition, protonation of the anionic oxygen regenerates the hydroxide catalyst and generates the hydrate product. Now, in reverse, this reaction is simply the elimination of water from the hydrate, and that's facilitated by acid or base catalyst as well. And in general, because really all we're doing is replacing a CO pi bond for a CO sigma bond, the balance here between the two sides of the reaction is subtle, and the reaction is reversible. What we see is that structural features in the initial carbonyl compound that enhance the electrophilicity of the carbonyl carbon or decrease steric hindrance at this carbon, these are the two key factors, electrophilicity and steric hindrance, will encourage formation of the hydrate. In other words, will make the hydrate more stable, more favored relative to the ketone or aldehyde, what we call the keto form. And here's a table that illustrates some of these effects. So what you're seeing in the second column is the equilibrium constant for this reaction, for the hydration reaction. So the larger it is, the more favored is the product side, the hydrate side, and the smaller it is, the more favored is the carbonyl side. Acetaldehyde is a nice example of a molecule for which the equilibrium constant is 1.0. Hydration tends to be a little more favored for aldehydes rather than ketones because hydrogen is quite small and water can very easily access the carbonyl carbon. And for acetaldehyde, the methyl group attached to the carbonyl carbon is also quite small, and so the hydrate is about on par with the keto form in terms of favorability. When we replace the CH3 group with something smaller, moving to formaldehyde with two hydrogens linked to the carbonyl carbon, you can see that the hydrate becomes heavily favored. When we place formaldehyde in water, it forms its hydrate almost completely. As we move down the table to more sterically hindered aldehydes, we see the hydrate becoming less and less favored. So for example, benzaldehyde, in which a phenyl group is linked to the carbonyl carbon, very much exists in its keto or carbonyl form in aqueous solution with an equilibrium constant of only 2.8 times 10 to the negative 3. And this is because of steric hindrance due to the aromatic ring. This prevents water from accessing the carbonyl carbon and so makes the carbonyl form somewhat more favored. When we replace one of the hydrogens in acetaldehyde with a chlorine, we see the effect of electrophilicity coming into play. So chloroacetaldehyde, which is here in the table, has a K value of 37, indicating that the hydrate is somewhat favored relative to the carbonyl form. In particular, we can compare to acetaldehyde and see that the replacement of hydrogen with chlorine leads to an increase in the equilibrium constant, increase in the favorability of the hydrate. And that's because the chlorine exerts an inductive effect. Chlorine is electron withdrawing, at least through the sigma bonds, and this increases the electrophilicity of the carbonyl carbon and facilitates hydration. The effect just gets compounded when we add more chlorine. So the trichloroacetaldehyde derivative has the highest equilibrium constant of all on this list, with the exception of the ditrifluoromethyl ketone, with the hydrate present essentially 100% when we take this compound called chloral and dissolve it in water.
Moving to the ketones, we see that the values of K are generally much smaller, and this is because of steric hindrance due to the two alkyl groups around the carbonyl carbon rather than one in the case of an aldehyde. So for example, benzophenone with two phenyl rings linked to the carbonyl carbon, essentially no hydrate of benzophenone is present when we dissolve it in water. However, electrophilicity still plays a role. So for instance, even though the hydrate of acetone is relatively disfavored, when we replace the hydrogens of acetone with electron withdrawing or electronegative fluorine atoms, we strongly increase the electrophilicity of the carbonyl carbon. And the fluorine atoms are also quite small. And so this amounts to similar level of steric hindrance, but a strongly electrophilic carbonyl carbon, and that facilitates hydration to the point where K here is essentially infinite. There is essentially no keto or carbonyl form when we take this ditrifluoromethyl CF32 compound and dissolve it in water. It's all the hydrate.